Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse. We're on to episode 26. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, man. It's uh, it's early. It is. Um, I think I still got those sleep crusties in my eye. <laughs> you just got citric acid in my eye. Oh, I thought it was just part of your beard. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Don't even don't even say that. No, it's not. Um, yeah, last week we talked a little bit about robots versus employees. We did. Had some good feedback from some customers there. Absolutely. Um, we took on a challenge last week. We did. <laughs> Pie face. How's that going, Garrett? Um, well, considering we only have six votes, we're going to need some more uh, <laughs> some more interaction from the audience. We're going to go with horrible is the answer to that question. How's it going? Horrible. Horrible. We're tied at 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Um, Might as well be 0-0. Zero, zero. Zero. Yeah, we have six votes. <laughs> apparently, we're talking to six people. So the six people that actually responded, thank you. Everybody else that's apparently bots that Garrett's been buying, because I can see the views, and apparently the views are a lot higher than the interaction. So Maybe those guys don't want pies. Maybe that's maybe, not extreme. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but we need to get to like 100 votes. Like, we really do. Like, yeah, we need you got to have, have some interaction. Real, yeah, it's got to have I'm some. Not, I'm not taking a pie for seven votes. Yeah, get I agree. I, I agree. I'm sorry. Like, to the people that are voting, we appreciate it. But come on. We got to get more people involved in this thing. You know, 100 people, we need 100 of them. That way it's like a good sampling and we can decide where it, you know, falls. We need 99. That way it can't be even. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it be 50 50. Like, dang. It would be. What's going to happen? So we got to get to the, we got to get to Wayne Gretzky's number, 99. So let's get there. Um, but yeah, I know. That was kind of disappointing when I was like, hey, well, what's the votes look like? He's like, 3 3. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Was that 30 to 30? Um, Might as well be zero zero. Yeah, zero zero. zero. Sweet, it. awesome. Glad to hear that. Come on, guys. I have three people in my family that would have voted for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not going well. Um, but yeah, hey, did you hear what happened earlier this week? What happened? Facebook and Instagram went down. That yeah, I saw that yesterday, right? Yeah, and we almost had to get rid of Garrett. We didn't need him anymore. Bye. <laughs> I was like, oh well. No more social media. We don't need Garrett. Uh, hey, Facebook has eliminated your job yeah. today. Garrett sat there all day at his desk like, guys, I don't know what to do. Social media is down. Oh, no. He's that's like, not, That's not true. He sat there just staring at me. What, what do I do now? <laughs> Little tears rolled down his cheeks. All I heard was, all I heard in the background was MySpace going, hey, guys, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Garrett's like, what's a Hi, MySpace? Hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah. What's a MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. Everybody's first friend. Wow, you've aged. <laughs> Uh, Tom was sitting there like, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Told you I'd get you, Zuckerberg. Just waiting. <laughs> He's been waiting out there, just waiting for this moment. Uh, yeah, no, it was pretty funny. We, uh, I was reading on the Twitter last night. I was reading some of the comments people were making about Facebook, which I thought was funny. Like, you go to Twitter to make fun of Facebook, and people were, you know, making fun of things like, well, what if there's a, what if there's a beautiful sunset this evening? Where am I going to find out? I saw something that said uh, on Twitter, Twitter had posted a tweet that said, welcome everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, yeah, because uh, Instagram was down, WhatsApp was down, and so was Facebook because they're all related. So. Yeah, they're all owned by the same. Yeah, so, but, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of an eventful day for Garrett. I saw him polishing up on that resume. <laughs> <laughs> How many people out there yesterday were just melting down? Oh, I'm sure. Social media I didn't even know it was down, to be honest with you, until Garrett came up. He's like, social media is down. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm moving on with my day. Um, yeah, no, so that was kind of fun. But, you know, we've been getting a lot of topic emails lately. We have. Which I appreciate to everybody who's been sending in ideas. We've we gotten more it. topic emails than we've gotten pie votes. <laughs> true. This is a true statement. But uh, I took one this last week that I thought was kind of interesting uh, from a customer of ours named Lee. Um, Lee Eckel, he was messaging us on Facebook and he said, you know, let's talk a little bit about marketing. And I thought, you know what? That's a good idea. Of course you think that's a good idea. Yeah. This is your like expertise right yeah. here. Well, I enjoy marketing. Um, but I thought it was cool because he said, where does, you know, he sees a lot of people going online and posting comments about it. And, you know, like Lee said, it's not necessarily just for him, but it's for other people who are posting the comments and the questions about, you know, where do I go to drive business for my machine? You know, how do I promote myself now that I have a machine? What, where's that work coming from? Those are good questions. Yeah. And so as we got into it, you know, it, it's really one of those things I started thinking about and I'm like, you know what, Lee, that's, that's a pretty good topic. You know, we can talk about some stuff there. Um, you know, where do you find the work? You know, where should you promote your capabilities? You know, those type of things. Um, how are you bringing in revenue? You know, obviously, we, we talk a lot about CNC and robots and all this stuff on how it's supposed to help you. Right. But you got to have the work for the robot to do, right? How do you get the work through the door? I mean, there's kind of a, 
a little bit of truth behind that. If you build it, they will come. You yeah. Know? A lot of people bring work to you. I mean, it kind of just naturally finds itself to you once people find out you have the equipment. Right. Word spreads fast. Correct. But if you don't get that word out there that you have the equipment, word doesn't really spread. Best kept secret. <laughs> best kept secret. Yep. Isn't that like a recipe for something? The I best think, kept secret. I think so. I'm not sure. Probably some kind of a cookie recipe. I think so. That's what I was thinking too. Cookies. Um, but yeah, you know, the other thing you have to think about is you typically are going to have extra time now that your machine is being a little bit more efficient in your business. Yeah, you should. So you have more time to promote yourself. Yeah. And maybe you haven't had to do that in the past. You know, there's the guys out there that I've talked to a lot of customers who are talking to us and they're like, I've been doing this 20 years. I've never had to promote myself ever. The word of mouth has always been enough. And to be honest with you, I've always been so backlogged that the next job hits me before I get done with all the jobs I have built up. So I've always had work. Now I've had to learn to promote myself simply because I can get things done so much faster that my, you know, if you will, my backlog can be larger. I can have more work sitting there waiting for me and I can accomplish it in the same amount of time. So you got to get yourself out there now. Yeah. You got to get yourself out there. Right, Garrett? Absolutely. Garrett, you know a little bit about marketing, don't you? Uh... (laughs) <laughs> it's always good when your social media guys like yeah maybe i don't know not really sure about this whole marketing thing <laughs> sounds like a crazy fad you should, you should dig into people's background yeah, a little yeah. further really should <laughs> really should have done a better job of that we'll chalk that up as a learning opportunity for me uh <laughs> but yeah you know then also you have to think about you know now that your demand has quote unquote reduced not that the demand isn't there for it, but you, your demand isn't as severe because you're not putting as much strain on yourself or your employees because of that machine. What other work can we do with the machine? Not necessarily right. going to find additional work, but what other things haven't we thought of doing before that we can now do? Right. Let's adventure into new territory, right? A new yeah. space. What can we pivot to on this machine to keep us busy and fill that extra time? Absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about marketing. You know, what does marketing really mean? Well, marketing is the action or the business of promoting and selling products or services. That's really what marketing is. Or it's including market research and advertising. So it's looking out, seeing what people are wanting, and promoting yourself. Like, hey, I can do this. Here's what I can do. Check me out. Yeah, I mean, I think the key term in that entire statement was market research. Yeah. Um, when you look at market research, this is this right here is kind of your explanation of what you should start with. I mean, anytime you get into trying to promote your business, you should research the market in your area. Here's where we start. Yeah. I mean, every area is different. I mean, I can tell you that firsthand. I mean, I talked to, you know, again, I'm going to go back to cabinet guys because it's one of the bigger markets out there, but every area of the United States is a little bit different. Yeah. We run into situations where some areas are really heavily into, you know, certain types of material versus other areas are absolutely against that same material. Right. So you kind of have to do your market research because I can tell you what we're seeing in our area. That doesn't necessarily mean what you're going to see in your area. Very true. So that's something you should really look into is you need to, you know, better understand what to do next with your CNC because you have to know what people are asking for. Right. You know, what are are the people in your area looking for? What are the demands in your area? What products are people buying? Where is that revenue being generated in your area at that time? Yeah. Just listen, listen to people. Listen to what they're talking about, what they're looking for. Yeah. And you don't know if you don't search it out, right? Right. I mean, you have to start searching. You have to start figuring out where does that next project come from? What is that next project? So the first thing I always encourage everybody to do is start doing your market research. You got to figure that out. You got to start talking to people in the area. Um, and that, that market research should never stop. No, I mean, no, it shouldn't. There's so many people that like, Oh yeah, I found this niche market I'm in. Right. Don't stop. That niche market might be great, but that next big thing may be coming along and you might have two niche markets now. Yeah. You got to keep your head down and keep looking for that next job. Yeah, exactly. You know, and even when you have that next job, it's never a bad thing to keep promoting yourself, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah. So, you know, now that we all know that you need to search it out, how the heck do you do that? Yeah. Where do you start? Garrett, how do you do that? Oh, that's a good question, Brandon. (laughs) You know, Brandon, I have no idea. So I'm going to say that's a good question. You should figure it out. No. He's um, catching on. He does what I do. He just defaults it back to you. I like it. Yeah. No, Garrett really does know the answer to this next question. He he helps us with this quite a bit. Um, He does. You know, but one of the biggest things that I always tell people about is you have to go talk to people in person. Like, don't be afraid to go communicate with other businesses. Right. You have to get out there. You know, what do you do next? How do you search this information out? You go talk to people. Yeah. Go put face to face. Yeah. You know, how do you uncover that information? Well, you talk to people, you visit businesses, you go to different events. Right. Right. Go I shake mean, some hands, kiss some babies, get out there. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, just make sure you're doing it in that order. Don't, yep. don't shake babies and kiss hands. No, don't, that do that. Bad. don't do that. No babies. Don't kiss babies. Just get. Um, but no, that's, that's an aspect that's missing, I think, right? Is getting out there, getting your face out there and meeting people, letting them yeah. see who you are. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's, that's the truth. You have to get out there. You know, sometimes it starts off with doing some of these, you know, home improvement events. You know, sometimes it's going to these sign events or whatever event that is in your area. You know, I've seen guys go to, you know, the state fairs or the county fairs and they do these, you know, uh, like sign makers, for example. They'll, they'll cut a bunch of signs and they'll go, go stand there and they'll, you know, display some of the signs that they've cut and they'll sell what they've made, but they'll also be handing out business cards the entire time. Right. And that's, that, smart. that's where the business can really come in. I talked to a, a friend of mine here in Minnesota. Um, he was at the state fair. He owns a shop saber. He has a plasma table. Um, he and his wife, they operate a phenomenal business. And they were cutting parts, you know, obviously well before the state fair to ramp up for the state fair. Then he brought everything to the state fair, sold out of everything he had there. Um, and then while selling out there, he was handing out business cards, you know, obviously and right. they were going back every night cutting trying to fill orders for people that because they were sold out and he, literally every day you know he couldn't cut enough he had his dad actually back at the shop running the machine while they were selling and like just trying to keep up it was crazy but i went to a shop like weeks after the state fair was done and he was sitting there still running his table like crazy and he said he still can't keep up he said the amount of orders that are coming in after the state fair is crazy that's awesome. Well, yeah, it's great. That's because, what you hope for. Yeah, exactly. That's what he did. He drummed up a bunch of business by handing out business cards at the state fair. And all the people that maybe didn't buy at the state fair now are reaching out to him. Right. Or people who didn't see what they liked at the state fair are now reaching out to him saying, hey, could you make this? That's awesome. Pretty cool idea. That's the whole goal, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, I think that in itself is the uh, is kind of the root of, of marketing, right? I mean, you get out there and you kind of plant those seeds, if you will, you know, and you're, you're waiting for somebody to say, hey... I got something for you. Right. Right, Garrett? Absolutely. With small businesses, I think making connections, too, is super crucial. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly it. As a small Absolutely. business, you have to make those connections. And Garrett hit it right on the head there. Um, you know, now this is Garrett's really area of expertise. Um, but you have online avenues, too. You know, we have a lot of areas online that you should be exploring, too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Talking to people, visiting businesses, going to events is always key in your area. Huge. That gets you out in front of the people. But... What's generations, you know, that are up and coming, what, what are they using? They're using social media. Yeah. Are they not, Garrett? I mean, is that not how you find almost everything? Absolutely. So. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday they were like, how do I make mac and cheese? <laughs> Can't figure it out. <laughs> I have no idea how mac and cheese happens. Um, but yeah, no, the online avenues are really important, right? I mean, you got Google. Um, you got your social media apps, correct, Garrett? There's a billion of those. They're all free, which is great. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a free way to put it, yourself yeah. out there. No, that's awesome. I mean, Garrett, yeah, touching on, touching on that was actually kind of important because that it's a, it's literally free marketing for social media. There, there doesn't cost you anything to promote yourself online. Right. Right. Um, Google, obviously you're going to pay some, you know, some money to have it, you know, for ads and things like that. But, um, you have forums out there. You know, I'm not a huge forum guy. Nah, forums. neither am I. God, forums are so annoying. I, you get that one guy in there. There's always that guy. Yeah, it just doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. He's got to be on everybody's posts, and yep. he's always saying something dumb. Yep. And he gets everybody riled up. Yeah. And it's people just, looking his address up on Google. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I hate that. That's why I hate forums. Me too. You know, if it's not the advertising for every porn site out there that's, right. you know, spamming the heck out of it, it's the guy who literally derails the entire conversation hey what grease do i use in this how dare you grease your machine right, like, right. what how did that happen why would you do that yeah. i never grease it yeah it was well, great yeah exactly or you know somebody sells the grease that is actually listed in the manual and then he's got to be the guy that posted well i found this grease is much better but why would you derail the guy from the proper grease if the company calls for grease use that grease yeah like you got that guy so forums not a huge Meh. fan of them but i mean you can advertise there if you want um youtube garrett youtube right absolutely we love youtube yes we do um tick tock or as i like to call it tick tack tick tack <laughs> we got the tick tack i'm a big fan actually is a really good advertising opportunity for a lot of people you know some businesses it doesn't work great for you know manufacturers in general i mean not a huge revenue stream there for you but you know Fabricators, you know, if you're building a sign or you're, you know, a sign maker, you know, you're getting into cabinetry and you get to go into these cool houses and, you know, put cabinets and kitchen up, there's some cool stuff you can show off there, is there not? There is. 
Some very cool stuff. Easy. Yeah, and you could put some cool music with it. I, I catch myself watching them all the time. Yeah, I know. Guy cut a song yeah, you could put Shake Your Tail Feather or something on there, right? You could. Is that the song? I don't know if I'd pick that one. No, is that not the one? Oh, I thought that was what the Tic Tac was all about. Um, <laughs> well, as dumb as it sounds for someone older using Tic Tac, you should just because of the opportunity with it because everyone's using it right now. I agree. You know, and that's, that's a good point is that just because you aren't into it, doesn't mean your customers aren't. Right. You have to remember that. Think like the customer, not like you. Right. I mean, I hear so many guys are like, oh, I hate Facebook. Well, I do too, but guess what? Customers like it. It's a necessary evil. Yeah, there's a lot of people that like it. Yeah, in the world we live in, you have to have social media if you have a business. I mean, social media went down yesterday for four hours, and the whole world was losing their mind over it. Right. Losing their mind. They're still talking about it today. Garrett's desk is still smoldering. He started it on fire. He didn't know what to do. You have to have that. That was just my hair. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You have to have social media to be competitive today. You really do. You You don't have a choice. You know what is a, like, unthought about site that I think should be thought about every time? What's that? Etsy. Yeah. I talk about Etsy a lot. Like, I heard a guy the other day. I was talking to him. And I'm like, have you tried promoting your product on Etsy? No. No, there's no reason for me to be out there. He's like, seems like that's where my wife hangs out. Seems like that's a good area for you to advertise then. Hmm. Who spends money? My wife. My wife. <laughs> yeah, my wife spends the money too. Right. Yeah. But I mean, seriously, like your thought process was because you think it's for uh, the female crowd that yep. now suddenly, like that that's the dumbest comment I've ever heard. Like get out there and advertise. I didn't think we still lived in that world. Yeah, right? either did I. I was like, get out there. Like that. get beyond that idea. Like that's kind of a, you know, dumb comment. You got to get out of your own way. Yeah, that's exactly. Get out. on Etsy. You're in your own way. Get on Etsy. Yeah. Like, I'm all for that, man. Like, for sure. A lot of people like to support small businesses, too, and that's where they go is to Etsy. I mean, if you're nesting parts and you have a quarter of a sheet left, put something on there, put it on Etsy. It doesn't take much. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah, use up your scrap material. And then, you know, instead taking that half sheet, stacking it in the corner, and then for the next year, you keep stacking half sheets in the corner, and now suddenly your corner's full of all this material that you're not using. Someday I'm going to find something uh, to someday. do with that. Someday. It's going to yeah. happen. We're, yep. we're going to come up with something. Someday. I'm going to save on that piece. Hey, yeah, John, we're... why don't you call the scrapper and see if he wants to come pick up these half sheets? Yeah. Or you could have just cut a bu- bunch of Batman logos out of it and probably sold them on Etsy. Right. You know? Or... You, you can slowly make single parts or single designs. What are you doing over there? Oh, my watch started it vibrating. It keeps dinging. Yeah, and I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for calling me out on that one. I was like, I don't know what's happening over here. Every every eight seconds. I, was get, yeah, I know. I was getting ready to just take it off and throw all the garbage. I was like, I don't, I don't know what's happening right now. I'm sorry. Like, this thing was good until it started doing that. Oh, nope. We don't want to do that. That's bad. Oh, yep. Yeah, now we're in trouble. Now we've made noises. Loud noises. Would you stop fooling around? All right. We're good. All right. Oh, I don't boy. know what's happening. I think I found the submarine, though. <laughs> it just pinged. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, back on subject here. <laughs> I don't even know what the subject was. Where were we? Etsy. Etsy. There we go. We were back on Etsy. But yeah, I mean, seriously, you can cut all kinds of things out of the scrap material you have. Like Garrett mentioned, I mean, it doesn't even have to be relevant to your business sometimes. No, I mean, look at, look at Jacob Garrison. He took a sheet of aluminum and cut out aluminum bottle openers, and he makes camper vans. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. But I bet he sold them all. I'm not sure. All of them? Maybe. So you made them. My first business when I was 16 years old was selling stickers on Etsy, and I would make one sticker of 40 different designs, and then as people ordered them, I would just make them. So it, it really isn't hard to make money on Etsy. Listen to that. That's how you know he's a go-getter. I think I'm going to sign up for Etsy today. Do you know what he just said? My first business at 16 that's years a, old. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, let's just give Garrett a round of applause real yeah. quick, you know, on that one. Like, That's pretty seriously, awesome. how many 16-year-olds do you know out there that are like, my business? No, I was working for the man. Yeah. Yep. You kidding me? I was trying to keep a job with my dad. <laughs> he was like, hey, you're fired again. Dang it. I was God. pouring concrete walls. Yeah. So, I mean, good for Garrett. Garrett, good for you, man. Um, the last thing to think about, too, is when holidays come up, people search for certain things like Christmas ornaments, Christmas gifts, wrapping paper, things like that. So when the holidays come up, Tailor your products towards that, and you'll see an increase as well. Huge. Mango. Again, Garrett with a home run. Yeah. But it's, it's true. Like, you need to tailor to your crowd. Right now, we are in October. Right. Pumpkins. Halloween. 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 Like, yep. now is the time to be cutting up those pumpkins and, you know, doing things like, you know, just Halloween decorations. Because I'll promise you, people like my wife. They're buying. They're buying them. Yeah. And yep. then I come home, and there's this wooden pumpkin carving on our front step. 
and I stop dead in my tracks and I look at it. And I think to myself, is it worth the fight today? Is it worth the fight? <laughs> You're damn right it is. And I walk in that door and I say, who made the pu- car pumpkin out front? And she says, I found it on Etsy. Someone on Etsy? I said, you do know we have machines at work that do that, right? Yeah. Like, just checking here. And she says, did you have time to do it? Nope, wasn't worth the fight. And I walked back outside. <laughs> glad you found that on Etsy. <laughs> Good job finding Etsy. I'm glad you supported local. And then I walk away. And I think to myself, wow, that was close. That was a close <laughs> that one. That was a close one. Dodged close. a bullet yep. there. Yep, that's what happened. So Absolutely. There's a look into my life right there for you. Right. But yeah, you got to think about that. Right? We got Halloween now. What's coming up after Halloween? We got Thanksgiving. Right? There's three holidays right around the corner, back to back for me. Yeah. Pies. Food. Turkey. Turkey. <laughs> Gotta love me some Thanksgiving. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> love me some Thanksgiving. That's something you gotta think about, right? Thanksgiving decorations, and then before you know it, Christmas is here. People yeah. are already shopping for Christmas I was stuff. Say, I heard on the radio. Yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say, Garrett told me the other day that, yeah, he already heard people shopping for Christmas. Like, we haven't even got the candy out of that. We haven't gotten any. We haven't gotten any well, of our cavities People yet. are excited. I heard there's like 150 container ships sitting off the coast full of Christmas stuff. Just ready to come in. People are excited. Finished my Christmas shopping weeks ago. It's coming quick. You want to take a trip off the coast real quick? Yeah. I hear the things are cheap out there right Me now. Me too. Um, or you could just not worry about the stuff coming off the coast and buy local. Make it yourself on your machine. Make right? it yourself. Right. Buy local. Shop on Etsy. Absolutely. Prepare. Think about what's coming up. Here's something that people don't think about. Do you know Amazon allows you to advertise your stuff on there. What? Yeah. Really? Amazon isn't just Amazon stuff. Like, right. Yeah. Like, a lot of the stuff you buy on Amazon, if you actually look hard enough, you can find American-made stuff on there, and you can find, you know, a lot of people, like, small businesses using Amazon as their reseller. Right. You know, and, and I was one of those guys that was not aware of that right away. But, and don't get me wrong, Amazon has plenty of business, but... Amazon does actually allow small businesses to work with them. So as a small business, you should check it out. That's really cool. You know, another thing that you may or may not be aware of, um, for all the people, and not, I, I don't know how many, to be honest, I don't know how large the franchise is, but Menards. Yeah. Okay. Menards, I'm pretty sure they're nationwide now, if I'm not mistaken. I would assume so. Yeah, they're maybe pretty big. If, if it's not in your area, I apologize, but it's a, it's a pretty large um, yeah, their buildings are the size of malls. Yeah, it's a pretty large, I guess, what would you call it even? Entitlement. <laughs> you can't even call it a hardware store. Yeah, say it's a hardware it's, store, but it's not. It's like the man's mall, like, kind of. You know? Kind of like a fleet farm on steroids. Yeah, it is kind of. So, But nevertheless, what they have is, we're kind of getting yeah. derailed trying to even explain what Menards is. But <laughs> um, for anybody who doesn't know, look up Menards. Um, but Menards has a new program that allows contractors or people like yourself listening to advertise your business within their contractor's department. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you contact that's them. That's huge. Can, yeah, and so people coming in shopping for supplies can also shop for a contractor at the same time. So someone like me and you comes in who has no idea what we're doing with anything. Yeah. We can just be like, hey, you know, I got this cart full of stuff, but you guys got a contractor? Correct. And that's, that's exactly awesome. it. Like, so, hey, I need a fence built, right? Yeah. So you walk in, you pick out the lumber, and then you go, okay, I need to find somebody who can maybe build the fence for me. Right. You know, or my kid wants a tree fort and you have to find somebody that builds the tree fort or whatever, you know, I need to remodel my kitchen or, you know, whatever it is. They have a contractor section now that allows you to go find the contractor there locally. So as those listening, advertising opportunity, right? Right. Get your butt in there and get your name on the list. Yeah, put your name in there. What's it going to hurt? Yeah. You pick up one customer on that. Was it worth your time? Absolutely. I'd say so. Yeah. So get in there, get your name on the advertisers list, and that way when my wife comes in there to buy something that she knows that I'm never going to finish, she'll just pay you to do it. Very true. I yeah. didn't know about that. That's cool. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool program they came up with. Um, and, you know, their slogan on it was kind of cool is it's, we're your supplier, not your competitor. We want to help you. That's yeah. the thought process. A lot of people look at, like, Menards as a competitor. Right. Because they sell cabinets. Because they sell some of the stuff that maybe they build. But the reality is, they're going to sell you your supplies, right? Yeah. They want to help you they're still get the winning. business too. Yeah. Right. But they're helping you win. Correct. So it's kind of a cool thing. I, I would encourage people to, you know, look into those kind of programs in your area. You know, that's something else that you can start looking at. Um, you know, the power of discussion is very important though. I mean, I think that's where you have to look at it is talking about ways that you can network, right? 
You know, this right. is one of those ways. Get into the, the big box store, right? You, instead of viewing them as, I don't know, I guess the word I'm looking for would be kind of the competitor or as, you know, all evil, right? right. Oh, the big box store. Right. Use them to your advantage. They're doing a ton of advertising. They're getting people in their store, and you can be advertising in the store. It sounds like a win. Right? Um, I guess one thing that I would want to talk about a little bit is the power of discussion and, you know, talking about what people, you know, do. You have to talk about what you do, right? Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask other people how they do it. Absolutely. Right? I mean, you have right. people in your area that are other contractors, right? How are you, how are you building those cabinets right now? Right. Exactly. You I'm know? doing them by hand. Yeah, I mean, start talking to your side. competitors. And the reason I say that is because you may find that your competitor actually becomes a client. Right. And that's where I think people, they get afraid. You know, we live in that world where everybody's got to act like they know everything. That's very you true. You know, like very they don't true. want to ask him how he's making his cabinets because it makes you feel like you don't know how to build cabinets, right? right? No, it's called networking. Yep. Hey, Jesse, how are you building your cabinets? Oh, I'm doing table saw, panel saws. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I have a CNC router. You know, if you ever need anything cut, let me know. Actually, I'm way behind right now. Yeah. Way behind. Good. Sucks to be you. Bye. No, I mean, that's where you... I thought you was offered to help me. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's uh, that's really where you can take in some extra work. You know, it's networking. You know, find a local B2B. You know, business right. to business groups are great. Right. Um, I mean, look at Sean Morley. Yeah. Right? Sean Morley is a great example of that. Yeah. You know, when you look at business to business groups, those groups are actually very beneficial because a lot of times they only allow one person from every professional in them. That's cool. So, you know, you have an insurance guy that's in there. Yeah. You have a real estate agent that's in there. You are going to have now a cabinet guy, cabinet guy in there now. Yep. You know, and, and so think about this, okay? You have a real estate guy in there. Yeah. You have an insurance guy in there. Perfect. Insurance guys deal with when things go bad in the house, right? They do. Fires, floods, floods whatever, lightning, lightning, whatever. Yeah. Real estate guys sell houses to people. That's their job. Well, when a house is purchased, there's a lot of times something that people want to do to it, right? I want to build that shed. I want to build that shop. I want to finish the garage. I want to do the basement. I want to remodel the kitchen, right? Yeah. Are those not two people you want on your side to help you draw up some business? Those are two people I want. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, you get in there and there's other, there's other people in these, but you know, it's not just three guys. In the right. There's a right. bunch of people in there from different, you know, you'll have somebody that's a, a massage therapist. You'll have a chiropractor, you, you know, there'll be people in these, but they talk to people all day long. Yep. So developing that relationship with these people now suddenly helps you develop a relationship with their clients. That's awesome. Right. You because reach more people. Jesse, I know you, you know, you and I've gotten to know each other very well over the years, right? Right. The reality is if you owned a business and I owned a business and they were separate businesses, would we not promote each other's business? Absolutely. Garrett, same for you, right? Absolutely. I mean, perfect example, and I'm going to just put it out there. Garrett is one of the best photographers I've ever seen. He's phenomenal at what he does. He, yeah. He owns a side, down. Yeah, sign, biz, side, sign business. He owns a sign business. He now. does. Congratulations on your sign business now. Uh, he has a side business of doing photography. He's, you know, go, he goes out and shoots concerts once in a while. He goes out I and... I think he's actually doing my family photos here soon. That's awesome. I think that's coming up. I think it is. Yeah, that's cool. And actually, I think I'm going to have him do mine. He's really good. Um, he is. He's incredible. But Garrett, what's your website? <laughs> yeah. Um, Shopsaver.com. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I like it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, in, serious, in all seriousness here, he does a great job. Um, yeah. And the thing is, is like when I have friends of mine that are like, hey, you're looking for a photographer, I tag him every time. Every yeah. time. You've like, done the same for me, right? Yeah. I asked you for numerous suggestions. Yep. But it's one of those things like knowing people helps you because yeah. Garrett won't connect with some of my friends. Like there's just, their worlds aren't connect, aren't going to cross, right? Right. But when I see one of my friends post on that social media platform, right? Hey, looking for somebody to do family photos, Garrett Super. And I was kind of waiting to chime in on that too, because that's one of the biggest things I've learned with my business is networking has found to be so helpful just with. Even weddings, if someone I know has a wedding inquiry and they're busy that day, well, who are they going to ask? They're going to send that referral to people that they know, and then I have an opportunity to get that business. And it, it's no different with uh, with other businesses out there. It's it's the people you know and making good relationships with those people. You know, they'll give you business through that. That's that's the truth right there. Is that your competitors aren't your competitors like you think they are? Right. Having a competitor as a friend sometimes is a good thing. That's right. Because. Like he just said, I'm too busy that day. I got too much going on. I can't get it done for that person's deadline. Yeah. Their deadline is they're just un, unreachable for me, right? Yeah. But hey, Garrett might be able to hit that deadline. deadline. Yeah, hey, awesome. Jesse might be available. Like, give him a shout. See what he can do for you. Like, it makes sense. 
And I'd rather hear it from another person, right? With networking. That's why I ask, like I said, you, you've helped me many times. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, it's much more trustworthy, right? I know that if you're giving me a referral for something, there's a good chance I can trust that. Well, exactly. I mean, Google is great. Don't get me wrong. But you always wonder, right? Like, I always wonder. Like, did they just spend a bunch of money to become important on Google? Mm-hmm. Or are they really as good as they say they are, right? right? Referrals, you know, they're the, the best business you can get, for one, because it's trusted business, right? right? It's a warm lead, if you will. The other thing about it is it's references. You have a reference instantly, yep. right? I mean, you're not questioning the validity of that person because Brandon told me about him. You know, like he has experience with it. Like it's probably a little bit, you know, I trust Brandon. I know Brandon. So if he's telling me to check out this chiropractor, he's probably got, you know, a little bit of merit behind, you know. Right. And you get treated differently too. Like you just said it, the chiropractor, that was the example. I mm-hmm. needed a chiropractor. You sent me to one mm-hmm. and I told the guy like, Hey, Brandon sent me yep. and mine and his relationship has been different than what it would have been if I would have just walked in. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and that's, that's one of those deals. Like, you know, and the chiropractor that I introduced, introduced you to, I met through a networking situation. I met him from another friend of mine. That's actually how I met him. So a really good friend of mine, a really good family friend introduced me to him and then he and I developed a relationship. Great guy. Yeah. And then you come along saying, hey, I need a chiropractor. I introduce you. Boom. All because of the networking that started, you know, three people ago. Yeah, absolutely. And I've sent you know, people to him as well. So it's, just, it's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing the people you find off of somebody's suggestion versus Google. Yeah, correct. You know, and that's, that's one of those things where, you know, having the ability to do that. So don't be afraid to ask people how they do it. You know, find those local B2B groups, you know, connect with local contractors. Contractors, no contractors. We talk about this all the time on the phone. I'll t- what do I do with my machine? Pick up the phone. Yeah. Pick up the phone and call contractors. Call some contractors. Absolutely. Because the reality is a lot of contractors don't actually build a lot of the stuff they do. No, they don't. You call a contractor up and he's like, oh, I got a cabinet guy. Oh, I got a tile guy. I got a sign guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a guy for everything, which is great. He connects you to those people. But be that guy. Yeah, absolutely. How do you get into with that? And I would ask him that. You know, hey, who are you getting your cabinets from? Oh, I just go down to Home Depot and I buy them from them. How long is it taking to get those cabinets? Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, I can do it faster. Yeah, I can build them locally if you want me to. And I can right. be competitive. Absolutely. You know, or, you know what? I get it. You got a good price with your guy. But if, if he ever can't hit your deadline, just keep my, my information. Call me. What's the worst that happens? And, and that's what I think that I think the hardest thing for people to do is just put their name in the hat, right? Like throw your name in the ring, right? right? Hey, I know you got a guy. Jesse, I know you and Garrett are working together. I'm not asking to break that relationship up. All I'm asking for is if Garrett can't deliver, if he's got something that comes up, he gets sick, he goes on vacation, and you need something, keep my name. Yeah. Because be guess what? There's going to be a day he's going to call you. There is. Absolutely. There's a day that he or she is going to say, you know what? Jesse, he said he'd bail me out when it happened, right? Yep. You know, so like that, just be ready to take those opportunities, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Don't, when they call you, don't go, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Right. <laughs> take no, no, I'm too busy. Make it work because it's your opportunity in the door. Absolutely. Um, get your name out fast. Yeah, no, exactly. And then, you know, post topics online for interaction. What's your favorite type of material for this cabinetry? You know, post it on your, your websites, post it so that way people see you interacting. And it might, com- you know, drive a conversation that turns into a lead. Correct. You know, sometimes it's just stupid things like that. And, you know, you go, you know, create a video. Create videos of what you do. Show off what you have done. People love to see it. I love seeing it. Market yourself, yeah. right? You have to market yourself. You know, have you made business cards for yourself? First, ask yourself that. If you can't say yes right now to that question, do you have business cards in your pocket at this moment? No? Then you're doing it wrong. You're failing yourself. Yep. Market yourself. Yep. Go market your business. And if you have those business cards for the guys who are like, yeah, I made them. Do you pass them out? Right. Well, no, I don't even know where they are. <laughs> like, no, you <laughs> That's still, a great still, start. Still fail. <laughs> yeah. Have them in your truck. Have them in your car. Have them in your pocket. Put them in your friend's pockets. Probably have them put them in their pockets. A little Use less them. awkward. Use them. <laughs> um, have you made a line card? Do you know what a line card is? No, I was just What's a line card? What is a line yeah. card? So a line card is an explanation of your services. It's literally a, and it started off as the title line card, but it's actually basically a piece of paper, if you will, that describes different things you do and different products you represent or different things you do that hmm. your customer might be looking for. You know, hey, we are a Sherman, Sherman, Sherwin Williams dealer, right? We're a Anderson Windows dealer. We're, a, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Market some of those things. But in one of those things, you know, that you should be telling people is I do CNC work. Put that on there for sure. For sure. Yeah. We do CNC work. We have a shop saver. Yep. We have, you know, a drill press. We have, you let people know that you have capabilities. Yep. 
because they'll see your name and associate it with what you show them. Absolutely. That if sounds, you don't say that, that you awesome. can do CNC, they're not going to associate you with CNC. That light bulb will go off. Yep, correct. Do you have a website? Yep. Good. If you don't have a website, get one. You need to. <laughs> because the internet is very powerful. If it's, you aren't showing up locally, you won't be relevant locally. It's very true. Like Google has a locals thing. I mean, as soon as you type in anything on Google, it shows you those businesses in your area that are rated for that. If you're not showing up there, people aren't going to find you. They're going to miss you. Sign up through Google, too, with your business because you can have your website, your location, hours, all that stuff pop up when people search for your name. You'll have more credibility. So definitely do that because that's something I just did recently that I never knew about, and it helps. Yeah, absolutely. That's something you got to do. Um, do you have a social media page? Garrett, is social media pages important for a business? Um, does everyone use it? Um, well, not yesterday. <laughs> 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 Joke's on them. Um, I think I yeah. heard like 3 billion Facebook accounts. Something like that. That's but crazy. Did you know people generally go to their Facebook page before they go to the actual Google? That's bingo. Did you know that? It's like a known thing that people actually search for Facebook yep. before they search Google. Yeah. Did you know this guy's blue? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but seriously, I mean, people literally look on Facebook for local business. Mm-hmm. Like, I need a contractor. Where do they go first? Facebook. Hey, does any of my friends know a local contractor? That's what they do. Yep. They don't go Google who is a local contractor. They don't do that. They go ask their friends. If you don't have Facebook, they're not going to be able to take your page. Goes back to the referral thing. Yep. It goes back to like, it's a lot easier for me to say like, hey, check out Garrett Super's photography right? Yep. And tag the page then to be like, check out Garrett Super. Well, how do I get a hold of Garrett Super? Well, I don't know. Here's that. Let me find his number, right? I mean, that's right. a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's it just is. easier to tag the guy's page and be done. Let them deal with it. It's yep. a lot easier for me to refer you if you make it easy for me. Yeah. If you make it hard on me, like, it's not my business. Like, nah, I'm not gonna, I don't know anybody. Yeah, like, I don't have anybody. Sorry, no one. Man. Like, it's not worth my time to like, it's I not. know I got that guy, but man, getting him in touch, blah, blah, blah. Like, not worth my time. Yep. But if I can tag you and you can handle it, then it's I hate being the middleman. Yeah, me too. You know, are you asking for referrals? Let me ask you that. When's the last time you have asked for a referral? Oh, boy. Every time you finish a job, you should say you've asked for a referral. Every time. When you get done and you've taken, you know, the money from the client and you've finished the transaction, you know, I hope you really enjoy this. You know, and usually that's an exciting day for everybody, right? Right. You know, I hope you really enjoy this. I hope things go great. You know, as always, if you hear of anybody else looking for this type of equipment, if you have anybody else looking for this type of cabinetry, if you have anybody else that's going to be remodeling their house, making a sign, whatever, make sure you send them my way. I appreciate it. Yeah. Like asking for it doesn't cost you anything. It seems like that's a missed step. Yep. Or sometimes, you know, I used to, I used to sell insurance. I don't know if anybody knew that, but I used to sell insurance and I used to ask every one of my clients when I was done with writing their policies, Hey, do you have any friends that you think I could help? Is there a couple people's names I could get and reach out to? Just need an email address. I'll send them an email. It'll be a one-time thing. If they don't respond, I'll leave them alone. You know how much business I, d- I drummed up that way? Probably a lot. Yeah, because you send them a quick email like, hey, Jesse and I just finished some business together. He mentioned that you may or may not be interested in trying to save some money too. If you'll give me a shot, I'd love to write some business for you. They'd send me over like, yeah, I'm paying this much a month for this. What, what do your rates look like? It at least opens the door. Yep, gives you a chance. Didn't mean I closed all of them, right? But it meant that I had the opportunity to talk to that person. You did. And somebody I never would have known, but because Jesse gave me his best friend's name. Yep. So. And who knows where that goes down the road, right? Correct. You might not have got that today. Correct. But who knows what eight months down the road brings. Yeah. And, you know, kind of what does it take to become relevant? Yeah. Well, that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. That, that ability to keep drumming up business so eventually these, this stuff starts coming back to well, you, Well, then right? it kind of gets you out there like people start re- recognize you as a go-getter, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, are you completing work? If so... You should start marketing that. Show pictures online. Yeah. You know, post pictures. Do things with that. Um, Are you showing off your finished products? Do you have that stuff posted on your sites? You know, um, are you cross-marketing? Like I said, connecting with your suppliers, your contractors, your customers. You got to do that stuff. Cross-market it. You know, have you looked at emailing your existing customers? Okay. If you're not taking down the email addresses of the people you're doing business for already, you're leaving yourself with unmarketable customers. Right. Email blasts are an easy way to send out, like, hey, just a reminder, I'm still here. Yep. You know, we're doing MDF doors today if you want, you know, any done. Um, reach out to some of your past customers. Hey, I, you know, Jesse, I know we did that kitchen for you about five years ago. Is there anything that I can help with at this time? Any other projects you're working on? Yep. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm looking at, you know, having a deck built or, I'm, you know, you start thinking about things. Um, reach out to your competitors. 
Hey, how's business been going? Oh man, I'm so slammed. Blah, blah, blah. That's awesome. I just bought a new CNC machine. If you want to go through this, you know, you want to spend some time, you know, cutting your doors on my machine, I can cut your doors for you. I can do dovetails. Whatever you need help with, man, I can cut them. You can deliver them to your customer and save you some time. Right. Stop Guess treating what? the competitors like they're enemies. Yeah, now that guy's a salesman for you. Yeah. He goes out and bids on the jobs. He wins it. He brings the business to you. You cut it. He brings it back to his customer. You never have to deal with the customer. That's awesome. Win. Win. Big yeah. win. Um, what about reaching out to jobs you couldn't do previously? You told the customer no because you didn't have time. Maybe now is the time to reach back out to him and tell him, hey, you know what? Jesse, I appreciate you giving me a shot a year ago when I told you I was too backed up. Um, I bought some new equipment. It's helped with the lead times a little bit. Still got a lot going on, but I can squeeze a lot more in now. Yeah. If something comes up, I realize that that job is probably gone. But if you have anything else, think of me again. Yeah, I apologize. I couldn't take care needs. of you. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of admitting that you couldn't take care of them, but you're willing to try again. It'll yeah. give them the opportunity to go, you know what? I really did want to work with Jesse. Let's, let's give him a shot. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just to let them know you, you got things back on track, right? Yeah. Absolutely, because what, what if you were busy and they maybe didn't have a positive yeah. comment at that time? Or, exactly. You know? Yeah, so it's one of those things where sometimes that stuff will help you. Um, here's one that I think gets missed a lot. Make a flyer for yourself, for your business, whatever it is, and drive around to the local sign shops, cabinet shops, hardware stores, all these areas that feed the customer, okay? Mm-hmm. And sh- tell them, this is who I am, this is what I have, this is what we can do. Take some pictures of some of the stuff you've done, put it on this flyer and give it to them. They're going to keep that. They're going to think of you. Because they may not have something today, but think about this. Most of those storefront sign companies, right? Mm-hmm. This, you know, you, it just comes to mind, Signorama, right? Yeah. You see a lot of these Signorama stores that are sitting in these little strip malls, right? Yeah. They don't have a lot of room for big equipment. No, they don't. So either they have to rent space or they got to come up with their plan. So until they can do that, right, until their business is big enough to do that, they're paying somebody for that sign. They sure are. Why not be you? Let that someone be right? you. Yep. They, they can go online and order that sign. They can do it through however they've been doing it. But you're local. You're there. You can get it done in a quick turnaround. Right. Right. Look at those strip mall places. You know, like there's places that do things for the customer that are storefront, right? They're doing the storefront resale, but they're buying their product somewhere. They are. You got to start marketing that. Let that person be you. Yeah. Let that person be you behind the yep. scenes. Get out there. Get your name from these people. Walk into those stores and leave a flyer on the counter. Yep. Be their go-to. Set up a lunch meeting with the owner of that company. That's a great idea. Like, get out there. It, it takes work. You're not going to make money with these machines if you're not willing to you know, go after the work. Right. You can't just add a machine and put it in your shop and shut the door and hope that people are just going to come Correct. back. You can't. You got to yeah. get your name out there. If you build it, they will come. They will. But they have to know that you're there. Right. You got to promote it. You got to tell people. Get yourself out there. Correct. If you want work, you'll find a way. Yeah. Absolutely. Simple you, as that. Yep. The work's out there. There's Especially right now. There's a ton of it. Right now, man. It's crazy. It is. We all have a place in this world. We do? We all have a place. Like, it's just a matter of figuring out what that niche market is in your area. Yep. Go talk to people. Start promoting things. Just because you're a cabinet guy doesn't mean you can't make signs. Just because you're a sign maker doesn't mean you can't make cabinets. You know? It's, Very true. You've got to be willing to take the jobs that are out there. You have to. you got to be willing to be flexible. Yep, be flexible. That's why you bought a CNC machine, right? Right. Right, Garrett? Exactly. Don't be afraid to start small, too. Smaller jobs get you into bigger jobs. Absolutely. That's very true. Yeah. You, you, you hit it there. Like guys are like, ah, it's too small of a job. There's no such thing as too small of a job. Does it pay money? Does, do they pay you? And will, yep. will it turn into something bigger? Well, that's my thing. Like, yeah, exactly. You cut one part for this guy, but he owns a construction company, right? Yep. You cut it for his wife, right? She loves it. Yeah, she loves it. You cut that pumpkin for that front step, right? She loves it. <laughs> yep. Greatest thing ever. Cutest pumpkin ever. Yeah. Well, guess what? The husband owns a construction company, and he needs cabinets for every one of his houses that he's been building. And the guy who's been cutting them is a total pain in the butt and just not doing his job, and he doesn't like the guy. Susan, where'd you get the pumpkin from? Well, I got it from, you know, Jesse's cabinet shop down the street. Who? Yeah, Jesse's cabinet shop. Okay, I'm going down there. Then he comes walking in. Hey, you cut some pumpkins for my wife? And you're like, yep, I did. And he's like, can you cut some cabinets for me? Sure. I need 4,000 cabinets. Oh. Can I have put the pumpkin project yeah. on hold? Hold on a second here. Let me move this one pumpkin real quick. I'm sorry. You said 4,000? <laughs> you know? But, like, seriously, you know, it allows you to start thinking about those type of things. Like it does. Big jobs come out of little things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lifelong customers come out yep. of short meetings. Yep. Exactly. Like I said, go to lunch with some people. Yeah. Take Jesse to lunch. Oh. <laughs> Bring your wallet. Um, Garrett? 
Is social media working today? As of now. As of now. We'll see, we'll we'll see when noon now. rolls around. Yeah, what happens today? Yeah, so as of 4.30 in the morning, we have social media. Nice. This is going well. It's, it's a win today. Win. We'll see what happens in a couple hours. Garrett, you have a job still today. Woohoo! You, you can stay. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. I'm glad you're staying. <laughs> um, yeah. The pie to the face thing, though. Six votes. Disappointed. <laughs> Super disappointed. We need more. We're going to need a few more than that. Yeah. So let's get some votes in here, people. 99 of them. Yeah. Email, Facebook, social media, social Instagram, media. Yeah. YouTube, in. anything. And that's your vote. Pigeon message. Pigeon message, yes. String in a can. Don't care. Be throw a, a rock at the window. Garrett sits right next to the window. If you throw the rock at his window, he will hear you. Mm. Two rocks is Brandon. Mm. One rock is Jesse. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> That's not fair at all. Uh, I'm glad you caught on to yeah, that. Yeah, I that did. That was pretty good. I thought that was pretty good one. I mean, every time that Rock hits the window, it's a vote for you and two of them's for me. So yeah. I win. Um, marketing. Ha ha. But yeah, hopefully that helped today. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of question out there on how do I draw them up business? Where do I go next? Do I have to pay somebody? No, you don't have to pay somebody. You can no. do this on your own. Yeah, you just need to take the time. Get take yourself time out there. Can you pay somebody? Yeah. Get yourself a Garrett. It's great. Just not our Garrett. Find your own. Yeah, get your own. Hands off. <laughs> no, Garrett's great. Like I said, but that's the thing is I did all of the marketing for us for years. Yeah. On it top got, of your job. Yeah, it got so busy, though, from all the marketing we were doing that we got a Garrett. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to quit marketing just because we were busy. Right. I just needed to reinforce Dude, that marketing. imagine how much more hair you'd have if you would have hired a Garrett it. years ago. All of it. Yeah, a lot more. I would have had sure. it all. Because it's all gone. It's all gone. <laughs> Every bit of it. I lost that hair. Bombaldo. <laughs> Bombaldo. <laughs> oh, I just love this kid. Every time. So I, I race circle track car, and I post videos on my circle track page, you know, updates for, you know, my fans and my sponsors, things like that. And every single time I go live, the first comment is Garrett with the title, Bombaldo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Every time. It's just it's funny. Every time it comes it. up, it's like within seconds of me going live, Bombaldo. I love it. It's a, it's a true hit. People love it. Uh, <laughs> only you, Garrett. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, like I said, I hope that helps everybody. Um, it helped me. I, I learned some stuff. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you learned, but. A line card. Oh. I didn't know what a line card was. Go. Hey, look at that. We learned stuff. We did. Um, anyways, so I know next week we're coming back with, uh, some new exciting stuff. I know next week's topic is going to be pretty fun. Um, what are we doing next week? We're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, vacuum systems. Sweet. Yeah. Actually, no, we're not talking about vacuum systems. We we just talk about vacuums. vacuums. We're not talking about vacuum systems next week. Um, we actually have a guest coming on the show very soon. We do. Yes. Um, I don't know if we want. I don't know if we're gonna say the name of the guest yet. Tease it for a little bit. We'll tease it for a little bit. Yeah. But this gentleman owns a shop saver. He does. He has been a customer for a little over a year now. Yep. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what it's like in your first year of having a CNC machine. It's it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited about that. It's uh, it's a good it's a good topic. I think it it drives a lot of business owners to really think about like. What changes in the business? Yeah. What doesn't change? You know, people kind of kind of get this idea of what's going to happen, and then what really happens is a little bit different. So right. it's going to be kind of cool. versus reality. Yeah, it's going to be cool to hear from this guest, you know, kind of on the reality of what actually happens. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, we got some cool stuff coming up. I, I'm excited about the future episodes of this. Um, yeah, and then we're kind of heading into that busy time of the year, if you will. We are. Can you believe it? We're getting there. It's coming quick. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming this way. Um, Where did this year go? It's like well, it started it's gone. with January, <laughs> and it went to February, then it turned into March. We you blinked it. and it was gone. Yeah, it. I don't know. Um, but we'll probably have some pretty good topics. I can imagine through you know the rest of October, November, December, especially for the time of year. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we have. Quite a bit of stuff that's gonna, you know, I, I hopefully drive your guys' business as well. You know, it'll allow sure. you to think about things that you maybe haven't thought about. Right. That's the whole idea of this is trying to give you guys more ideas and more tools to get out there and be successful. Right. Get your get your business out there. Show people what you can do. We're in your corner. Always have been. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, 
we also have on our website, I don't know if anybody's aware of this, but if you can go to our website, if you want to ever check anything out, we also have some blog topics out there that we post. Um, but one thing that, you know, I think next week we're going to talk a little bit about is our latest blog, which was about um, improving ventilation and air quality in your building. I think so, that's a really good topic. Yeah. yeah so that is, uh, that's what we're talking about next week. So when I say vacuum, that's kind of what we're talking about is yeah. it's going to be dust collection vacuum. You know, it's going to be your ventilation systems. It's going to be your downdraft systems for plasma guys. You know, it's your overhead hood systems. You know, we have a bunch of things we're going to talk about. And I think that'll be a, a, a good little topic that we're going to chat about. So next week's is going to be tips to improve ventilation and air quality. Yeah, there's some important stuff in there. In the shop. Yeah, you know? especially for your health and stuff like that. Yeah, so exactly. And, you know, we get, that. yeah, we get guys that are always worried about the dust side of things, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, the machines do create dust, but yep. there's ways to collect it, and we're there going to talk are. a little bit about that, and uh, yeah, hopefully help you clean up your shop a little bit. Nice. Right? Clean up the shop. Nice. I like it. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's what I got this week. You got anything else? I don't, man. I, I have nothing. Jesse, thanks for uh, joining us. Garrett, thanks for bringing a mic today. Yeah, big help today, bud. Like your contribution. Absolutely. Smart kid. Yeah, smart guy there. So I'm Brandon. I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop with Shop Saber.